if you are looking for the best Nokia 4G feature phone. Well, you're in the right place. We've dug deep and conducted extensive research, and now we're breaking down the absolute best Nokia 4G feature phone. We're talking about the perfect balance between price and performance, tailored for different scenarios. If you're eager to find out which suits you best, don't go anywhere. Stick around till the end, because we've got all the links for the best prices in the description below. No specific order, uh, just the top contenders in the game. Ready to dive into the world of best Nokia 4G feature phone? Let's get started. Number five, Nokia 225. The 225 is a simple plastic bar with a flat keypad and raised four-way rocker. It measures 4.91 by 2.01 by 0.54 inches HWD and weighs a mere 3.17 ounces. The plastic screen is a 2.4 inch 320 by 240 LCD. The screen cover scratches pretty easily, but the springy plastic material generally resists cracks and handles drops well. The color options are black, blue, and gold. The Nokia 225 runs Nokia's proprietary series 30 OS on a Unisoc USM9117 chipset. It has 128 millibyte of RAM and 64 millibyte of storage, yes, megabytes, not gigabytes. If you want to do much with pictures or media, you'll need to add a micro SD card. My phone had no problem with my 256GB card. Call quality is good. Like all of the new 4G voice phones, the 225 supports HD voice, and it doesn't distort at top volume. Maximum volume is a bit lower than on the 6300, but it's still perfectly usable. There are 14 ringtones, including the traditional Nokia tone, and you can use your own MP3s. The 225 doesn't give you cellular signal in DBM, so it was hard to tell whether it got slightly better or worse reception than its peers. But whatever the difference was, it was slight in our New York City testing location. The 225 has a removable 1150 minutes around battery that delivered 6 hours, 21 minutes of talk time. That's less than the 6300, 7 hours, 37 minutes, but more than sufficient to get you through the day. 4G voice phones tend to have less talk time than their 3G and 2G ancestors did, because voice over LTE, Volte calling is a more complex, power-consuming affair. There's a neat little feature to let you bring over contacts from an Android phone via Bluetooth. You can't select a subset of contacts to sync, so I suggest setting up an Android device with only the contacts you want on your 225. You can create contact groups and select ringtones for individual contacts or for groups. Number four, Nokia 6300. I'm a little bit in love with the Nokia 6300 4G, 69T or 99, a KaiOS quasi-smartphone that's an ideal traveling companion. The 6300 looks like a candy bar voice phone, and its form factor alone will keep you from getting sucked into the internet but it has just enough smarts to help you navigate, play some music, and keep you connected around the globe. If you want to stay reachable while you keep your eyes on the sites around you, it's a perfect choice. That makes it our editor's choice for simple voice phones on T-Mobile's network. The 6300 is a very rare dual SIM phone that's been approved for Volte and Wi-Fi calling use by all three US carriers. You can use one SIM, a US and a foreign SIM, or two US SIMs. Call quality is spot on, and the 6300 is one of the loudest voice phones we've encountered. In our testing, the earpiece went up to 93.9 dB, and the speaker went to 93.2 dB at 6 inches more than 4 dB louder than the Nokia 225. The spec sheet doesn't list any international LTE bands for the US model, so you're likely to get 3G coverage abroad. That said, foreign carriers are much less aggressive than US ones are when it comes to turning off 3G. There are 26 included ringtones, and you can also use your own MP3s. This smooth matte plastic slab is available in gray, green, or white. It measures 5.17 by 2.09 by 0.54 inches, HWD, and weighs only 3.5 ounces. It's a little taller than the less expensive Nokia 225, but still easy to slip into a pocket. There's a basic 2.4 inch, 320 by 240 pixel LCD under an easily scratched but not easily cracked plastic panel. Text input defaults to triple tap. There's also a predictive text mode, but you can't set it as the default. Fortunately, as long as you have 4G or Wi-Fi, you can hold down the cursor pad in any text field to use Google Text-to-Speech. This truly transforms the experience of texting, WhatsApp, entering addresses in maps, and other text entry. Number three, Nokia 105. Nokia is ridiculously affordable and simple. 105 is blessed with long battery life. Just don't expect more than the absolute basics. There isn't much you can demand from a cell phone that costs just $20 all in, except perhaps that it turns on and off and connects your calls. In that sense, the Nokia 105 is just about the best dirt cheap phone you can hope to buy. Thicker sides and a tall narrow build make the 105 easy to grip and carry around, and rounded edges keep it from digging into hands. It feels fine on the ear, and its compact construction lets it easily slip into pockets. It isn't so small it gets lost in a bag, and it's light enough not to weigh you down. 
The 105 was never intended to be a solid, hardy device, and it shows. After popping off the back cover a few times, I noticed that a gap where the back panel joins the rest of the phone. Simple cell phones like the 105 may not be sexy, but one area of strength that's impossible to overemphasize battery life that stretches on for days. On its only 800 mAh radar battery, the 105 boasts 12.5 hours of talk time and up to 35 days standby time. The 105 is the picture of power efficiency so far, aided by extremely short default backlight times and the handset's low maintenance OS. The number of contacts you can have tops out at 500 in the device's storage, where there's space for multiple phone numbers and a cartoon icon to go with it, but not much else. You'll have slightly more options for saving the type of number, home, work, mobile, for numbers saved locally, though the SIM card should give you additional storage space for your contacts, generally 200 more. The 105 runs on Nokia's Symbian Series 30 OS, which uses round icons slapped on a very simple, familiar grid. There's text message support here, plus an alarm clock, an FM radio, reminders, and a few simple games, like Sudoku. Number 2. Nokia 2660 There's still people out there who just want that simpler phone experience, and that's the market that the Nokia 2660 Flip should fit rather nicely. It brings with it the familiarity of the Nokia brand. Though, as with all Nokias of late, it's actually via HMD Global, the company that has the licensing rights to the name. A simple flip form factor, and yes, it can play Snake. It's also pitched, as HMD Global's done with many of its throwback Nokias, as a kind of digital detox phone, because its feature set is quite limited, so you're not going to be so horribly addicted to your smartphone. The Nokia 2660 Flip is, as the name suggests, a flip phone, but this is no Motorola Razr 40 Ultra. For a start, it's a heck of a lot cheaper, and the folding mechanism on the 2660 Flip is an actual hinge with the primary 2.8-inch screen at the top. Amusingly, HMD Global calls this a big screen, although back in the day, I guess that would have been true. The Nokia 2660 Flip has a single rear-facing 0.3 MP camera. No, that's not a typo or a misplaced digit. It's almost a typo to say that the Nokia 2660 Flip has a camera, to be frank. Look, I get that classic old-school phones had very rudimentary cameras on them, and again, it's absolutely in service to the lower asking price of the Nokia 2660 Flip, but there's no amount of dressing up the camera's appeal as retro that will get past the fact that this phone takes bad photos nearly all of the time. The Nokia 2660 Flip runs on a Unisoc T107 processor, although again, runs isn't the right word here. Like many other feature phones, you're not talking about a full array of exciting functions and new apps to install. Most users are going to be primarily drawn to the Nokia 2660 Flip as a calling and texting machine only. For those functions, it's fine and works exactly as you might remember, classic feature phones working 20 years or more ago. Number 1. Nokia 800 Tough The Nokia 800 Tough is a small, light, nearly indestructible feature phone with epic battery life. It's a perfect backup phone or even a daily driver if you don't want super advanced smartphone features. Voice control via Google Assistant takes what could have been a frustrating experience and makes it much more bearable. The only real downsides are the camera and low-resolution screen. The durability of Nokia feature phones is legendary. The classic Nokia 3310 is still responsible for some of the best indestructible phone memes around. That phone was re-released back at the start of 2017, although it wasn't built like the tank its progenitor was. Enter the Nokia 800 Tough, a Kiowa's feature phone that is built to survive. Encased in shock-absorbent rubber with MILSTD 8110G compliance and an IP68 rating, the Nokia 800 Tough is a brick but it's probably a much smarter brick than your last Nokia feature phone. This is the Nokia 800 Tough review. Battery life and durability. As you could probably guess, battery life on a feature phone with a tiny screen is epic. I'm not gonna tell you how many hours of screen on time I got, because well, I still haven't killed the 2100 mAh battery in the week and a half I've been using it. Standby time is reportedly a month and a half, and I don't doubt it. The protection doesn't stop at the rubber either. There are two water-resistant flaps over the micro-USB port and 3.5 Beniable Meters headphone port on the top edge. They're right next to a 198 lumen flashlight you can activate by long pressing up on the navigation button. The phone's screen needs to be on for this to work, though, so you're not likely to accidentally activate it in your pocket. Navigation and the amount of time it takes to do things. The lack of a touchscreen means you're stuck using the menu system and navigation key to get where you want to be. 